Here's the thing for you to think about with your safety plan. I would encourage you, as part of your whole culture of openness, is to train your greeters as first responders and triage teams. First responders and triage teams. And they got to know when to use a lifeline. Today's video is brought to you by MagTech Ammunition, the exclusive supplier of range ammunition for all active self-protection training. Get yours from Lucky Gunner for fast shipping and great prices. Hey, if you got a family here, right? This guy, and, and you go to, to the husband and family, and you say, look, I, great, I love that you're greedy. Understand when you've run out of your depth. Understand when you see a problem out in the parking lot, your job is not to solve that problem, it's to come get help. Or to send your middle child who's old enough to come get me, to come get me. We always had something at West Greenland when I was there. We had a, we, we had a, a code word. Now this code word is an easy one. You might adopt it, you might not. <clears throat> the code word was unique. If somebody came to me and said, Pastor John, I have a unique visitor you need to meet. Then everybody in the congregation knew. If you came to me and said, I have a unique visitor, it means I have a problem. It means something's not right, Pastor. I need some help. Hey, uh, most of my church just call me John. John, John, I got a unique visitor. Can you come with me and help? Whatever I'm doing stops in that moment. Sure, I'm on the way. Hi, how are you? What can I do for you today? Now, I know in my soul something's wrong here. Because usually then, a few times that we had this happen, somebody's agitated, somebody's frustrated. The uh, problem in the parking lot, you know, somebody had a fender bender or something like that. Hey, everybody, what's going on? Can I help you? Rawr! I mean, yeah, that makes sense. You know, blah, blah, blah. And then <clears throat> I would tell that other person, hey, would you go get team member number two? I need team member number two. Can you go tell Justin we have a unique visitor? Now, if I'm standing in someone's presence who's frustrated with me and say, hey, I have a unique visitor. Can you go get some help for me for that? <laughs> but they're not going to go, ooh, I'm going to fight you. You know, you're unique. You're, you're special, right? It's okay. See how non-threatening that is? Mm -hmm. So having training your greeters, what's a problem look like? What's something that's there? A triage team, when somebody comes in and they're angry, does your, does your greeting team know how to say, okay, are you doing okay today? Hi, how are you? Ah, okay, can we help at all? Have you had coffee? <laughs> you doing okay? Can they, can they get trained up to help you with that a little bit? And then to maybe go, maybe take a <laughs> mm. Hey, would you go tell the head of security that he's having, a, he's having a rough day? Would you go ask pastor to help him? Hi, nice to meet you. Go on to the next person. So training your Greek team to understand how to do that. And, and then again, to go get a lifeline when they need it. Or, because you're going to have those people show up who are disconsolate, who might be suicidal. Problem with suicidal people is sometimes they decide to do suicide by cop or suicide by congregation. Uh, and of course, those folks will show up at times in your midst to know how to identify when somebody's in emotional distress and then go get help as necessary. Now, I can't teach you that in three, four hours. Here, but that's follow-up training. That's understanding how to deal with an emotionally disturbed person, okay? You know, Mike, I know you guys in, in the cop world, man, you deal with EDP all the time, right? How much training a year do you get on EDP? Well, probably 80 hours. Yeah, 80 hours a year of, because of course, because you're moving into the emotionally disturbed places all the time, right? You're, whenever, when we see the domestic disturbance, the couple fighting in their house, we call the cops. The cops are the ones that have to go, here we go, knock, knock, knock. Hi, can we come in? No, you can't come in. Well, I am. <laughs> We're going to talk tonight. <laughs> Dealing with that and crisis de escalation and those kind of things. But videos are very helpful in education because they show you what really happens. Um, there's all kinds of stuff uh, and myths and bad information out there about how gunfights happen. I'll give you one. You ready? Here's a myth three shots, three seconds, three yards. Have you heard that? Who's heard three shots, three seconds, three yards? Average gunfight is three shots and three seconds at three yards. Total crap. You know where that comes from? It comes from Leoka. comes from the law enforcement officers killed in action report, which cops, you know why it says the average cop gets killed at three yards? Here's how the average cop gets killed. He doesn't get shot at three yards. He gets shot at seven, eight, nine yards. But then the perp stands over the top of him and goes, yeah, man, bang, and shoots him one right here at one yard. Guess how that gets recorded? Death is at a yard. It's not how he got killed. He got shot at 15 yards. It was one of his partners that came up, one of his other partners. So that's how statistics can get us in, in trouble a little bit. But this is a very typical CCW encounter. That first shot may be super close. Uh, there's a whole other stuff to learn there as well. Go ahead. Now, number nine, follow-up shots, very often necessary. Regardless of handgun caliber, I know 
There are still plenty of people who want to fight the caliber wars. The caliber wars are over and are stupid. About 85% of uh, CCW carrying Americans today in the survey that I did last year are carrying 9mm now. It's over. 9mm is one. Done. Period. End of subject. That said, when we had a terrible ammo shortage, the dudes that had 40 that could still get a hold of 40 caliber ammo were like, that's what's up. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue. I don't, personally, I don't care. 940, 45, 357, SIG, I don't care at all. Great. Knock yourself out. 10 millimeters, best millimeter. I don't care what you carry. All works. All does the same thing. Okay? Terminal ballistics and all handgun calibers are pretty much the same. Uh, often gunfights don't end with that first shot, so you got to keep at him until he decides he's done fighting. Don't shoot him until you think he's done fighting. Shoot him until he thinks he's done fighting. Okay? This is where multiple target acquisition is important because it simulates a moving target. So when you go to the range and you're like, oh, okay, I've got three bad guys. I'm going to run an El Prez or something, right? And i got three bad guys to hit here. Your chances of doing that in a CCW gunfight of actually getting all three targets are very slim. However, if I shoot a guy about three times, guess what he's going to start doing? Moving. So then i got to go, oh, there he is again. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, he moved again. Oh, there he is. Bang, bang, bang. So those multiple targets in your, in your uh, classes are very helpful because they simulate a moving target. Now I know there's some range of people like, oh, now they make these you know, gummy puppets that are on like tracks and you can move. Those are super cool. They're just really expensive and not a lot of ranges have them. One shot will often not end a fight. You've got to be willing and ready to keep out there. Go ahead. Okay, number 10. Most of what is taught in the martial arts community on gun disarms is utter crap. I say that as a committed martial artist. I love martial arts. I've been studying for 12 and a half years. Most of what is taught about gun disarms is garbage. I do see a good number of disarms, but seldom with any kind of sophistication. Almost never, oh, that was a perfect Aikido throw. Oh, that was a perfect Krav Maga you know, technique that we work on on the mat all the time. The principles of the five Bs plus one is what I see again and again and again. Plus one is control the distance, and after that it's deflect, dominate, distract, disarm, disable. See it every time, all the time. Happens again and again and again, okay? Simple, fast, and full throttle. So, I see gun disarms all the time, and I see them work all the time. So you hear people that sometimes will say, never try to disarm a gunman, John, it's a good way to get shot. I, I, I agree, you can get shot trying to disarm somebody. If I'm not armed myself and I gotta take his gun away from him, I'm in a very bad spot, agreed? But I do see them work all the time. I see them happen pretty regularly, okay? Go ahead. Here's one of my favorites. It's actually a really old one on the channel. Um, security guard here, security guard here. Okay? You see a guy come down the hallway here with a gun. She is going to bug out. He is going to go to work. Mm -hmm. She's like, oops. He sees that guy with a gun. Mm, what? Nope. Boom. What a boom. There you go. Three times your size. I mean, yeah, you can't, you know, uh, yeah, do you have a huge advantage there? He's still fighting. Now, now uh, listen, I will say that's a big boy. Yeah. But that big boy was spry. Yeah. He could move. Simple, fast, and full throttle. If we walk all the way back through it, you can actually watch him decide to control the distance and get there, grab the hold of that gun, keep it from pointing at him, and dominated it, and then just went to town with the elbows on him, took the gun away from him, and beat the crap out of him. Oh, wait, oh, there it is. Boop, and off he went. So again, I do see them happen with some degree of regularity. But you've got to go practice. Now, now, remember what I said earlier about the videos not being training? The videos are education. I can show you what's required. That does not train you to do it. You might go, oh, I've watched enough ass videos. I know what to do in the moment. Uh-uh. you got to be on the mat. you got to go. All right, stick a gun in my face. Ready? Go. Uh, we've taken it to the level. Now, you will see. Anybody see the videos of the idiots that are doing this with a live gun? Eat on a bull nick. Likes to do that, too. Big time, right? Call us system. God bless. And, uh, you know, st oh, stick a live gun in my face, and I'm going to take it away from you and all that stuff. Now listen, let's be real. Is he really going to shoot that guy? Hopefully not. <laughs> but, okay, so what does the guy holding the gun know? If, if he doesn't go fast enough and I pull the trigger, and I turn his head into a canoe, what does that make me? A murderer. A murderer. Am I going to pull the trigger? No, I'm going to wait till it's out of the way. That's not a, an actual realistic way to do that. You know how it is a realistic way? We've done this. Put on the freaking mask, you give somebody a simunitions gun. You go, you can't move until I move. 
But what we did is I did this uh, in our martial arts school with a middle rank uh, who's a teenager who liked to be really competitive. Liked to win, right? Crisp hundred dollar bill. You can't move till I move. But once I move, if you shoot me in the face, you keep that hundred bucks. Does he want to shoot me in the face? Mm -hmm. You darn right he wants to shoot me in the face. I've only lost one hundred dollar bill to the kid. And I beat him up several times too, which is kind of fun. Totally worth the hundred bucks. <laughs> so, so again, practicing those disarms takes time on the mat, it takes effort, it takes energy, it takes instruction, it takes a willingness to pressure test, it takes time. Now, again, how much does this guy practice that on the mat? I don't know. Does he look like a, did that look like Kung Fu? No. <laughs> What'd that look like? Big dude food. <laughs> right? What's that, Neil? Yeah, look, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Looks like homie played, uh, you know, at least D3 football, right? <laughs> But that's how they go in real life. 